Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafaroff. This show is designed to highlight the work of philanthropic leaders here in the United States and then beyond. Today with us, Alex Donner. Alex is president of Alex Donner Entertainment. He's a talk radio host and also a philanthropist. Let's all welcome Alex Donner. And Alex, it is wonderful to have you on Successful Philanthropy. And Alex, let's start with your beginnings. I understand you went to Princeton and that you were a divorce lawyer before you actually got involved in the work you do today. Well, Jean, I grew up in New York. And by the way, it is such a pleasure to be here with you, with such a noted philanthropist and now TV host. Um, you've done so much for so many. Uh, so, Gene, I, 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 I grew up in New York City on, on the east side. My father took me to jazz clubs, and along the way, I had the privilege of going to many nightclub acts and studied uh, piano. Uh, my sister ended up being better on the piano than I was, so I gave up the piano and started singing, and she accompanied me. Uh, I went to uh, to, uh, to Paris to study uh, between high school and college. And a friend of mine and I started playing in the Metro. I played like three chords on the guitar and he was a good guitar player. And at the beginning, the, the French ignored us. And then they started throwing centimes, which were the pennies at the time. And then they started throwing francs. And at that point, uh, my friend said to me, you know, Alex, you're actually pretty good. You're, you, you, you're a good singer. So I started to think about it, got to college, walked into a party. There was a piano player playing. He said, uh, you know, you sound really good because I started singing with him. He said, we're, we're, we're starting a band and why don't you come down and audition tomorrow? I did. I got the part and we became the kind of retro band at Princeton, which is kind of a high level party school, a lot of parties. And then we met alumni, started playing their country clubs. And uh, it, it, it all led to eventually uh, becoming the singer band leader at El Morocco in New York. Now, this was the days when they had two bands. We had a Latin band and I was the American band. And we, they would, it would turn around at the, at the end of our uh, playing and the, the stage would come around and they'd play the same song that we were playing as we were exiting and they would come forward and they would play for half an hour and then we'd take our break and then we'd come around and play again for half an hour. And it was, uh, fun. It, it was wonderful, but uh, we, they were uh, very competitive with Studio 54 and Studio 54 started to win out. And Studio 54 had nothing but uh, a DJ. So they called me in one day and said, we love you, Alex, but uh, we're firing you in the Latin band. We're going with a DJ because we want to compete with Studio 54. So I had told my parents, I wasn't going to be a lawyer or an investment banker. I was going to be in show business. And they said to me, great, do it on your own. And I did well there at El Morocco. But then I woke up uh, the next morning realizing I had no job. I was living in, in a, an illegal sublet with, with, uh, with cockroaches. So I called up my father and said, you know, I've been reconsidering this law school thing. And ended up going to Fordham Law School, still had the band uh, on, on a Saturday night and ended up getting a job working for the infamous Roy Cohn at his law firm. And what was that like? Well, I came from a sheltered environment, so it was a very, very good experience. Um, it was, every case was a novel and very interesting. I work on death penalty cases. I worked on all sorts of wild, cra crazy, crazy things. And they just sort of threw me in there. Uh, didn't get a lot of training, and it, but it was great. Uh, training on on the job and learning how to uh, get up and and even if you didn't know the case very well, make a case. Uh, so that so that so that was very good training. But then they made me do divorces, which I really didn't like doing because it's it's almost impossible to please anybody in a divorce. And I I yeah and I I, I but I but paradoxically um, I became 
somewhat famous in New York for doing divorces during the week as a lawyer and weddings on the weekend with the band. It was so strange that the New York Times wrote it up and I got all sorts of publicity. And then I went to India to play a second time around wedding for uh, one of my divorce clients who I'd, I'd done pretty well for her in the divorce. And so she took me to lunch and said, what can I do for you? I said, take, take my band to India. Uh, we want to play. And it was a big deal because it was the first destination, major destination wedding for an American in India that they were trying to promote. So I was pictured in town and country in a turban leading the band. It went out on the AP wire. It was in the newspapers all, all over the place. And I got back and I found out that unfortunately Roy Cohn was dying of AIDS. And I knew that the firm would go down uh, because he was the rainmaker, et cetera. And he also hadn't paid his taxes in a long time, and I knew the IRS would come after the firm. So uh, they called me in and they said, we're getting too many calls for your band at the switchboard. You've got to do one or the other. You can't do divorces and, and parties anymore. And it was an easy decision. I thought, I'm going to go see if I can make this into a business. And I went out, and based on that publicity that I'd had, and I was a young face in the in the 80s and people were making a lot of money on wall street there were a lot of parties and the phone started ringing i got a secretary in my one bedroom apartment and then i got a two bedroom apartment and then i got a three bedroom apartment with two secretaries and i was off and running and i've been able to do what i love to do which is which is music and so i've like to think that i've made a lot of people happy after making some people unhappy for five years as a divorce lawyer so you were a divorce lawyer for five years, and then you went out on your own and started Alex Donner Orchestras, and 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 you never ne never looked back. I assume never never looked back. I'm having a great time, and uh, as I mentioned, making a lot of people happy. Um, mu music is my my passion, and I'm I'm blessed to be able to do this uh, for a living. And now, what was your favorite job? performing meaning was it the job that took you to india or was it a job in the united states or what do you recall and and when you look back say well that was the one thing i really loved doing well i i would there there are a lot of them but i would say when we went to the palace of versailles to play for um they a, a group of largely americans and some french um had renovated the Louis the Fourteenth's garden lights, which had not been on since the revolution. And we started playing and they opened the doors and everybody looked out and I saw the, the gardens um, lit up and, and the fountains lit up um, for the first time since the French revolution. And that was an amazingly moving moment. And right after that, Jimmy Buffett came up and said, uh, can I sing with your band? And I said, of course, Mr. Buffett, I mean, of course. And I said, but if I sing, if, if, I, if I have you do uh, Margaritaville and I sing a little background with you, will you do Mac the Knife with me? And he did. So what a, what a night that was. Very, very interesting. And today you travel around the united states with your orchestra and and you have many different sounds correct well i have my orchestra gene um which has played uh hundreds and hundreds of parties uh of all types um all over the country we we uh you know this this fall will be in chicago twice we'll be in oklahoma city we will be in Palm Beach twice. We've just come back from, from Newport, uh, Madison, Connecticut, and we were in Exeter, New Hampshire last weekend. Plus, of course, a lot of parties in New York. Oh, and Philadelphia. We have a couple of debutant parties in Philadelphia and Washington, et cetera. But I also represent uh, some, some, some other bands, too. We have a very hot, young, contemporary band that plays some of the younger weddings that we have. And then we also send out a number of jazz musicians, just sometimes one or two or a trio. So, uh, you know, we, we're, we're very busy with it. And so you offer a variety of music, which I think is so important because as a music lover, I know that 
Well, I like all types of music and music makes everyone happy. I don't think I know anyone who doesn't love music because it lifts our spirits and it, it caters to our senses. And well, when you hear music, you just want to get up and dance. Now, Alex, many people don't realize that Alex Donner is also a philanthropist. And I know that your great grandfather, I believe his name was William Donner, started a foundation for the family. And now you are very involved. Talk a little bit about that and then talk about some of the charities that are very important to you. Well, I, I am, and everybody in my family have, have, have also been blessed with the opportunity to, to do philanthropy because of my great, great grandfather, William H. Donner, who was a, a self-made man in the, in the steel business and left this foundation uh, to the family. We are now going into our sixth generation, which is, which is very unusual. Most family foundations either end after two, three, maybe up to four generations, or they're taken over by outside interests. But we, this, this family, which is now more than 35 cousins, uh, still makes, makes all the decisions. Of course, we have an executive director in, in our American foundation, in our Canadian foundation, but we do all the work in, in terms of scouting and finding uh, philanthropic causes that, that we believe in. Uh, one of the things that I have particularly been interested in and, and given to, um, as have some of my, uh, my, my cousins and my, my brothers, because my sister unfortunately died at a young age and really her, 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 the love of her life was, was, was animals. And, uh, so we, we have, uh, done a lot with, um, American Humane, which you know, well, Gene, I know that you're, you're, you're on their board now, uh, among the other organizations that you're involved with. Uh, so that, that's, that's one organization. Um, we were, uh, the first mover in arts management, uh, just to go back to the history of the foundation, uh, in the, in, in the eighties, uh, there really weren't professional managers of museums at that time, uh, et cetera. And, uh, we, we, we pioneered in arts training. We also did a lot for the, um, uh, for, for Native Americans, uh, when it wasn't as fashionable as it might be now, we're talking about 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, we are active in cross-border projects between Canada and the United States. Uh, because we are so diverse now, uh, 35 cousins, uh, we, we, we give to a wide variety of causes because when you put 35 cousins in a room, no... No one will agree on too much. So we sort of uh, let one do this and one do that and one do this and one do that. That seems to be the best way to, to, and, to work it out. And so for Alex, I'm assuming that philanthropy is a passion of yours as well. And I think it is wonderful that your uh, ancestor, your I don't know whether it was your great, 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 great grandfather or your great great grandfather great. <laughs> started this foundation great 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 grandfather okay but he left something for the family and obviously philanthropy must be very important uh, to all of you and it's nice to see a family as diverse as yours 35 different co cousins involved with one foundation a foundation that supports many different causes. And so Alex, if you had to say um, your favorite, it sounds like it's uh, animals and because you were doing this in honor of your deceased sister, which I find very, very important and especially wonderful. And you were doing something that helps you with remembering your sister and what other charities? I know you were honored by health advocates for older people a number of years ago. They're having a gala coming up on October 6th. And I'm also involved. Um, I'm involved as an honoree. And 
I know you've offered to be helpful there and talk a little bit about that charity and why you accepted uh, the position of honoree a number of years back. Well, health advocates um, provides a, num a, a number of services uh, for the elderly that can't afford them in the greater New York City area. Um, they also, and for instance, they have a service where they will come in for free to any elderly person's home and make sure that that home does not have any dangerous conditions in it. For instance, if the person has uh, tr trouble with mobility, they make sure that there is a, a proper th uh, thing to hold onto in the bathroom so they don't slip and fall. Make sure that the, that, that the kitchen is, is, is properly uh, equipped, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so we, we, we think that's, that's important. And a lot of that slips through the cracks through the various other pro government programs uh, and uh, other programs that are, that are available out there. So we, we think they do a, a super job. Yes, and I agree with you. Health Advocates for Older People is an important charity and I'm very happy to be involved. The gala will be on October 6th at the Union Club in New York City. And anyone who wants to buy a ticket, well, you go to the website and you can purchase your ticket there. Now, for our audience, we are with Alex Donner. He is president of Alex Donner Orchestras. He is a radio host and also a philanthropist. And Alex, talk a little bit about your radio show. Yes, well, I'm... Uh, I've been very friendly over the years with somebody called Dick Robinson, who's a, a major fixture in, uh, in South Florida, particularly in the, Palm, in the Palm Beach area. Uh, and he has a radio station called Legends Radio, which is on the FM band down there, but also streams really across the world. And it is, it plays music from the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. And I just happen to think that that music is the greatest music ever recorded since perhaps the classical era. I think that this music is classic and deserves to be preserved. The combination of incredible melodies incredible harmonies in the instrumentations, the, the, the arrangements, the, the, the singers, uh, so well-trained. Uh, it just all comes together to create magic, uh, particularly in that era. Of course, we play all kinds of music with, with my orchestra and try to play it authentically. And there are many nights when we play uh, much more contemporary music than that. But I think that particular era deserves to be preserved. And I am very happy to be one of the DJs. I'm on from four to six, uh, Monday through Friday. And I get to talk about some of the songs, some of the performers, um, do little interviews occasionally. And uh, it's just, it's, that's another love of, love of my life. Uh, and just to go back to what you said before, uh, there's a great quote, and I don't have it here, but basically what it says is that we, we judge a society, the goodness of a society, by how they treat their very elderly. Yes, and for our audience, we are with Alex Donner. He is president of Alex Donner Orchestras. He is a radio host and also a philanthropist. Now, Alex... What advice would you give to a young person who might want to follow in your footsteps? How important was your education? And what do you advise anyone who wants maybe to be a musician um, and, and maybe doesn't have um, the financial resources to follow a career as a musician? Don't do it. <laughs> Meaning? Meaning... I think you should only go into 
pretty much any any aspect of show business, well, any aspect of performing, if unless it's the only thing that 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 you want to do, that you really can do, that 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 you are really obsessed with. If there's anything else you can do, because life is much is 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 much easier uh, in outside of this 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 kind of uh, world. Uh, I would never complain, but I am on the road all the time. I am in uh, because I don't stay in fancy hotels. I stay with my musicians, uh, and it's tough. It's 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 very very tough. And you you're going to have uh, almost everybody, unless you're extraordinarily lucky, or you're going to have years when everything is great, and you're going to have terrible years, and that's very hard to deal with. Uh, a steady job is much better for almost almost everybody but if this is what you have to do then you just simply have to do it so if you're asking if someone's asking me the question should i do it i'd say if you have to ask me the question no you got to know yourself without even asking the question yes and my father well he studied a trumpet at juilliard and then hmm. saw that he couldn't make a living just in performing in bands and so he went back to college, to Columbia Teachers College, and then got a master's in teaching, and then went on to be a school teacher, a music teacher in high school, and then later in the grammar schools. And I have to say, my father truly loved his career as a teacher. And from time to time, he would play in bands, which was his real passion. But he found, you know, it was just too difficult just to play in the bands. Now, Alex, I'm going to put you on the spot. Alex, you have an absolutely wonderful singing voice. I don't want to put you on the spot, but would you mind singing for us? All right, Jean, this one is for you. Night and day, you are the one. Only you beneath the moon and under the sun. Whether near to me or far, it's no matter, darling, where you are. I think of you night and day. Thank you, Alex. That was truly beautiful. It was, it was a privilege being with Eugene, as always. You have a beautiful voice, really so difficult to do without any accompaniment. And Alex, we have a few minutes left. And what words do you want to leave our audience with? Well, uh, find something that you love to do and try to make a career out of it. And I know that not everybody can do that. I have been extraordinarily lucky um, and life has funny twists and turns i thought at one point that i was going to be stuck as a divorce lawyer for the rest of my life and look how it turned out so uh, i believe there are signs from above and we all whether we no matter how we worship that 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 there is a a greater power and if we are in tune and, and, and can, can follow uh, signals, that good things can happen for almost all of us. Alex, thank you very much for joining us. And it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Jean, thank you so much. It was a privilege being with you as always. This concludes Successful Philanthropy. Our guest today, Alex Donner. Alex is president of Alex Donner Entertainment. He is a radio host and also a philanthropist. I'm Jean Shafferoff, your host. I'll see you next week. But if you want to watch more on Alex Donner, stay tuned for this short video.